Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I made my gold training Wonder Woman costume. First, I start by making the chest plate out of tree flex. In my original Wonder Woman costume tutorial, you can see how I heat and form this over a mannequin. I will add a link to that video in the description. I heat up the edges with a heat gun to soften them and make them easier to cut. With a stronghold glue, I glue thick, slightly stretchy fabric over the sides of the chest plate. I leave a lot of fabric loose in the back so I can sew velcro to it later to make it wearable. I realized the strip in the front was unnecessary and would cause a bump once I covered it in fabric so I cut it off. Then I used Loctite adhesive spray and added a coat of it to the chest plate. Then I took a textured, bumpy, gauzy fabric and carefully covered the chest plate. As I applied it, I used my fingers to scrunch it all together to really accentuate the texture of the fabric. So when you're applying it, don't pull it too tight or you might stretch out the texture. You're basically just pinching together sections of fabric to squish the texture together so it is more defined. I make sure to form it all over the sides of the chest plate. And I keep spraying glue as I need it. You don't have to worry about having no folds on the top of the breast because that will be covered anyway. I cut off any excess fabric around the edges but I leave enough to fold it over and glue it down in the back side. Also, instead of gluing the fabric to the back, I sew it down. And you want the fabric pieces to be able to slightly overlap each other so you can attach them with velcro or hooks. Or you can button or lace them up or use a zipper if you prefer, it's totally up to you. Since I'm done applying the fabric over the chest plate, I make a pattern for the details on the front. To make this pattern, I use a very commonly used easy method, which is to cover the piece thoroughly with masking tape. For curved areas, I use smaller strips of tape and wrap them around. You want to make sure that you apply the tape thick enough so when you pull it off, it doesn't rip. Once I'm done covering it in masking tape, I trace on the design. She has a bunch of different strips and belts going in all kinds of directions, so I trace those out. When I'm done tracing out all the designs, I peel off the masking tape. Make sure you're careful when you do this because you don't want to rip the tape, but if you put it on thick enough, it should be pretty durable. Next, I begin cutting out all the shapes. Make sure when you cut them, you number them all and make markings, like little X's or darts, where they need it attached so you don't forget where they go. Also, when you number them, make sure you make a chart on a piece of paper that also has the numbers showing exactly where the pieces will be placed. These are all the pieces cut out and lined up. And I add little extra markings to make sure I know where they'll go. I take the masking tape patterns and trace them onto craft foam and cut them out. Then I cover them in the same fabric that I covered the chest piece in. I also use the tape pattern to trace the lines where the pieces will go on the chest plate. And I apply a lot of hot glue in the necessary areas and glue all the pieces down. Some of the pieces I cover in dark vinyl because they're going to be brown instead of gold. The color of the vinyl doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just going to paint it later anyway. Also, to cover the foam I just glue the fabric down on the edges. Then I take hot glue and glue the strap to the chest plate. And I finish by gluing on all the rest of the pieces.
When I'm done gluing all the pieces down, I coat it in a couple layers of Mod Podge. When I'm done coating it in Mod Podge, I let it dry and then once it's dry, I begin to paint it. I start with a cheap gold acrylic paint that you can get for a couple dollars at Walmart. Then I covered all the dark vinyl straps with brown acrylic craft paint. This is the back painted and with velcro attached. Once the base layers are dry, I begin weathering the armor. I take a very dark brown acrylic craft paint and water it down a tiny bit. Then with a paper towel, I wipe off the excess paint. This will really help define the curves and structure of the armor and make it look more realistic and authentic. This also helps the texture of the fabric show up on the armor. Once I'm done giving it a dark layer of paint, I go over it with some lighter gold and lightly highlight certain areas to define them more. Then I use little googly eyes and studs and paint them gold and attach them to the armor. And this is what it looks like when it's all painted. Next, I'm going to show you how I did the skirt. First, I start with a beige fabric and fold pleats into it. I pin down the pleats as I go along. Then I sew down all the folds. Here's the skirt with everything sewn down. Next I just glue the skirt to the chest armor. And then I trace where I need to cut it shorter with chalk. After I cut off the excess fabric, I water down some gold and light brown acrylic craft paint and apply it to the skirt. I make sure to work it into the fabric and apply it evenly over the top portion of the skirt. Make sure you take a test sample of fabric that you don't need to be sure the color is right when it dries. Then I take a dark brown color and mix it with gold acrylic craft paint and then water it down and apply it to the bottom portion of the skirt. This creates a gradient effect. This is the skirt after it's all painted and it will dry a bit lighter. Next, I'm gonna show you how I made the shoes. First, I cut this shape out of vinyl. Then I cut the edges off a slightly smaller piece and sew it over that. And I make two of these. Then I cut some holes in it where I need to slide straps through and begin pinning on the straps. I just use some strips of vinyl and fold them down on the edges to make the straps. Also, you want them to be able to overlap each other on the edges so you can Velcro them together. Once I'm done pinning them on, they look something like this. Next, I'm going to paint the shoes. I decided to use a shoe with a heel, but you can use a flat one if you want, I just wanted to be taller. Also, I got these at a thrift store, so they didn't have the beige that I was looking for, so I just got a black pair and decided to paint it. These are fabric shoes, so they take cheap craft paint pretty well. If you get leather shoes, I would use a leather paint instead of craft paint. 
here's the shoes before and after painting them. Once the shoes are done drying, I glue down the straps to the shoe. First I apply hot glue, then I apply super glue to make sure the straps don't pull off. Then I take some brown paint and paint the soles of the shoes brown. I also paint the straps brown as well. And here they are all painted. And they just attach with Velcro down the sides. And slide on my foot. For the bracers, I have a pattern on my website that you can download and print to make these. I also show you and go into detail on how to make these in my other Wonder Woman costume tutorial. I will add a link to that video in the description. In that video, I also show you how to make these hand wraps. It's pretty cool that you can use these bracers and wraps for both Wonder Woman costumes. This sword that I have is from 42 3D. I will add links to his shop in the description. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. I absolutely love the Wonder Woman movie, and this outfit was one of my favorite looks of hers in the movie, so I just had to make it. I actually really enjoy wearing it too. I wish I could just walk around like this every day because I feel so cool when I wear it. I also have a Wonder Woman makeup tutorial already posted to my channel, as well as a bunch of other cosplay, costume, and makeup tutorials, so feel free to check them out. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye!